Hello, I'm Jana, and welcome back to The Crafty Corner. Today, we're going to be working with some mystery art supplies, and I hope that you're going to greatly enjoy this because today, I'm not even gonna choose my own supplies. So I need to introduce you to someone. This is my husband. This Hello. Is ben. And he's a farmer and a computer... Um... IT technician. Ah, so do you know a lot about crafting? I make stuff out of wood. Do you know about the color wheel? Colors come on wheels. Okay, so as you can see, he doesn't know a whole lot about crafting, and I'm going to leave it in his hands today to choose my art supplies. Uh, Follow-up question. Do you know who Tim Holtz is? That guy that you watch videos from? Very good. Okay, so at least we have some general recognition. Okay, then. So, here's the list. Here's the basket. Go find me some craft supplies. Okay. Five distress inks, which apparently are the ones in the black cases. How many colors of red are there? Eh, one, two, three, four. four. Five of those. And what's next? Two of the oxide inks, which are apparently gray boxes. Yeah, let's go with this one and eh, why not that one? So paper. Well that's paper. Is there a difference? Two are yellows and two are white. Well, this one looks like paper. Eh, decorative paper. So apparently is this. Is there a difference? I'd say this one looks the most decorative. Eh, okay, what else do we have here? Coloring medium. I guess that's, yeah, that one looks good, it doesn't fit in the box. Okay, large stencil. Well, this one looks clean, may as well let it get dirty. Small stencil. done with this die set which apparently are these what have we got here hm, drinks sounds good to me I'd rather be drinking okay tool Yeah, three for the price of one, sure. Go with that. Pick one of these sets. Oh, that looks colorful. Jar. Just go with that one, it was on top. Pick a book. Well, we have three. What else here? Well, may as well go with the one from the middle. And do the taper box. Sounds like a box might have more than just a little bit of tape, so that's probably the safer one to 
maybe give a chance to do something with. So I gave my husband a list of craft products to pick from. The first thing that I asked him to look for were five distressings. Let's see here. We've got chipped sapphire, old paper, pine needles, crackling campfire, and lumberjack. Not bad. These are actually complementary colors, so this is going to work out quite nicely. All right, let's stick these over here. Next, I asked him to pick two oxide inks. And for oxide inks, we have got, ooh, cracked pistachio and pumice stone. We've got another color that complements this color palette, and we have a neutral. That is way better than I'd hoped for. Next, let's see what our substrate is. Okay interesting we're going to be working on distress specialty stamping paper next i asked him to pick a fancy paper and here we have some worn wallpaper i love this this is going to be great next we have a coloring medium and the bonus color medium to the inks is distressed watercolor pencils very good after that, we have a large stencil and a small stencil. Here's our large stencil. Ooh, I can see some possibilities with that. And for the small stencil, we've got a little shifter. Very interesting. Then I asked him to pick a die set. The die set we're going to be creating with... Okay, now we have our first twist. This is the Sizzix Tim Holtz die set happy hour. This is definitely going to be interesting trying to incorporate that. All right, so we've got that. Then I asked him to pick some to a tool set for me. And we have paint brushes. I can totally work with that. And after that, I asked for an ephemera packet. This is the ephemera packet. There's lots of goodies in there. I'm sure I can make something with that. Next on the list, we have pick a jar. And for the jar, We've got microglaze. Okay, this will be interesting. Next, pick a book. So now for our sentiment. Of course, we've got small talk, which is full of very snarky things. That actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and uh, a box or tape. And in the box, we have got droplets. Perfect. All right. Let's see what we can do and create something from this random assortment of art supplies chosen by my husband. Okay, so we're going to start by creating a background and we're going to do that using our pre-selected color palette. So this is the easy part. Creating backgrounds, that is something I know pretty darn well. All right, let's start with some ship sapphire and let's add in some pine needles like that. And then for the oxide, I want to do the pumice stone. Let's start with that and then I'll see about adding in a touch of red over the top. But right now I want to build up a good foundation. So let's bring in the distress sprayer. Now for this challenge, I am going to be trying to use everything that was included but I'm probably only gonna pick and choose a few pieces of ephemera, not trying to use all of it. And as for the inks, I'm going to try to incorporate every single ink that was selected. All right, let's start making our background. So as always for inky backgrounds, we smush our ink, then we let the color work its magic. So this is going to be the dip and dry Tim Holtz technique. I'm just going to repeat this process, dipping and drying while using the specialty stamping paper. So let's go ahead and put this part on fast forward and watch the distress ink work its inky magic. Okay, here is our inky background. 
And the good news is I only have three distress colors left that I need to add in. So let's put those on hold for the moment. And now let's go ahead and pull in one of the really weird ingredients that was selected. This is microglaze. And there's no way that my husband knew that microglaze plus specialty stamping paper with oxides can create a super cool effect. So we're going to be doing a little bit of magic with microglaze next. I'm going to start to apply this. And when we wipe off the microglaze, we're going to put this in slow motion because the color surprise reveal is magical. It blows my mind every single time. So I'm just going to get a good dollop of microglaze on my finger and we're just going to apply this all over the specialty stamping paper. Okay, so you're not going to really see much of anything right away. You're kind of get a, going to get a little bit of a hint of what's going on, but the real magic is going to show up when we start to wipe this off. Now, I did decide to grant myself a paper towel because that is not technically a crafting supply. It is just a everyday supply. So, microglaze is on. Now, let's go ahead and slow this down. This is 100% worth it to watch in slow motion. is the completed background after we've used a bit of micro glaze magic very cool all right now let's continue to add to our background but now we're going to be pulling in one of the stencils let's start with this one I want to add in some old paper all right this is gonna be interesting since I can't apply this with a ink dabber but let's see how it works if I use finger I'm not even sure this color is going to show up. So let's see what we can let's see what we can do. Also, the micro glaze might resist this. I think I got it all off, but there's a chance that I didn't. So let's see how this goes. Just taking my finger and trying to dab this on. All right, let's see here. Let's see how that's going to work. Just going to take that and dab and this is the color old paper i'm hoping that this will show up because it really is a nice green okay it is good so i just have to get lots of ink on my finger and really tap it down oh ink dabbers are definitely better than this even a brush would have been better than this i don't think that these brushes will quite do what i want but you know what? That's the fun of a challenge. Let's see. Okay, there. We've got a little bit of that on here. And I think I wanna add just a little bit more down here. Fortunately, this ink pad is pretty juicy, so it's pretty easy to get ink out of there and onto the substrate. All right, let's see how that went on. Okay, good. So we can set aside old paper. Now I've just got Crackling Campfire and Lumberjack Plaid to deal with, but let's not worry about that at the moment. All right, stencil, check. And, oh, we've still got this big one as well. Hmm. You know what? Let's use more of the old paper, and we'll just add this on here. Should be slightly easier, because I'm just kind of going to 
dab and rub that on with my finger and adding another layer of texture shouldn't be a bad thing okay let's see if that's showing up yes it is good and let's just do a little bit more in the other corner it's subtle but it is still there and that works okay not bad and lift yes we managed to get some ink on here so we've got both stencils we use the old paper ink now let's see about that fancy background paper okay so I'm getting an idea for like cocktails at midnight so I think I think what I want to do is take some of this and let's see, let's get our regular measurements of four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just quickly rolling this up so I can use the squares for my measurement. All right, one, two, three, four, five, five and a half. Good. And one, two, three, four four and a quarter good now I am going to quickly bring in a tonic trimmer since I'm not cutting myself off from my chopping options okay very good put the scraps in the scrap bin and we'll tuck this away and we'll roll back down the mat. All right, so what I'm going to do is take this and we're going to just... Ooh, I like both sides so much. I think I like that more. Nope, maybe that. So we're just gonna take this and I want to get just a kind of rough random edge. just like that all right and to adhesive that we're going to be using some collage medium i am giving myself free choice when it comes to adhesives otherwise how do we put a project together all right let's go ahead scribble that down so cocktails at midnight is my theme and I'm basing that on the colors that we were given and the die set. Okay. That's good. We got that lined up. Okay. Pretty happy with that. Good. Now, let's see. Oh, and I just figured out how we're going to include the inks. So we're going to do a tropical drink and a cosmopolitan and we'll be able to use some of these fruit slices as well that will get these in and allow us to incorporate the distressed watercolor crayons but before we do that I want to continue to add to that background just a little bit and see what we can pull in for ephemera Ooh. Interesting. I'm not sure. Maybe not that. What pieces of ephemera could we use? Kind of leaning towards these little ones right now. Yeah. But this too has a bit of possibility. I'm going to think about that. Let's see here, we can put that could go here. I can definitely tuck something over and here. We could tuck this over here. I'm definitely liking where this is going. Okay, and I do want to kind of cut this out. I don't want to use the flowers, but I could use the rest of this, specifically the lettering, as part of the backdrop. I am absolutely missing having stamps right now. Because if I had a stamp, I could add in the lettering in the background. But 
not a problem. We'll just borrow that word chunk from here. And to place this in, we're going to need a tiny attacher. All right, let's put these parts over there for now. And if I just pull this up a little bit, whoop. Let's see. I'm gonna put that there. All right, tiny attacher is where? Okay, so we'll take the tiny attacher, we'll turn this on its side. All right, staple and staple. And we'll see if I can't tuck that under here. All right, I'll just reapply the collage medium. having the writing in there. Okay, so we have a staple here and here. We'll just tuck that back down into here. That should be pretty good. Okay, now let's see about adding in the rest of the ephemera. All right, so I was thinking about placing these flowers kind of along here. I like that. Place that down. I'm probably going to need to lift it up to tuck other pieces of ephemera in, but not a big deal. Just place this. All right. That is good. All right, now for the ephemera bits. Let's tuck this under here. Okay, and we'll want this to go along here. Good, that hides one of the staples. And I want another piece hidden under there. All right, not bad. So we'll give that a moment to dry. We're gonna set this aside for now and we need to turn our attention to the die set. So for the dies, we're going to be using this one and that one along with some of the extra pieces. So let's go ahead and open this up. Okay, this one, ooh, cherries. That will easily get me my red piece. I want that. Oh, do I want that one? Hmm. There are so many choices. No, I want that one. Okay. All right, let's put this back. Okay. So, I'm not going to do that. We'll do... Where'd it go? This one. And that one. We'll need these pieces. Okay, and why not? Let's add in a tropical umbrella. Do I want the leaves? Yes, yes I do. Okay, and I need the interior pieces, that and that. So for the die cuts, I am going to grant myself another substrate because otherwise, what do I cut this out of? I don't think I have enough of the other paper and that one probably won't take the ink so we will add another piece of paper here we're going to be using some distressed watercolor cardstock and I'm also going to be backing this with some double-sided adhesive to make sure everything sticks okay here are our die cuts so we're going to be pulling in the distress crayons for this and we'll be able to use the paint brushes so Got that. I also have some water off to the side since that will be necessary to activate the brushes. Now the first thing that I want to do is make sure that we use the Crackling Campfire and Lumberjack plaid. 
So I'm just going to put a little bit of the ink off to the side here and we're going to use that to do a little bit of watercoloring. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with that. So this is the easy part. We can use the lumberjack plaid as part of the cherry. And we can also use that as a little bit of, hmm, maybe the umbrella. Let's see here, take that. Yeah, I kind of would do like an umbrella with a red, reddish orange outside, and then we could do like a yellow interior. That could look cool. Okay. So I just want to paint this on pretty darkly. The paper that I am using for the die cuts is some of the Distress Tim Holtz Ranger cardstock. The watercolor paper makes things so much easier to apply ink to. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this part on fast forward as I color in all of these elements. Here are the finished drinks. I am so happy with the way these turned out. So we're just going to move these off to the side for a moment. We'll just keep them in frame. And I need to trim off the little extra bits and pieces off of this card. So just flipping that over, taking the tonic mini snips, and just trimming off those little pieces. Okay, not bad. Going along this side. Good. And over here. All right. So our background is ready. Now let's go ahead and add the focal point. Okay. Let's see here. I think that's going to go there. And I'll tuck this one. Over here. Hmm. Not bad, but not quite what I want either. I want a, I want a ledge for those to land on. Let's see what I have in the ephemera pack that I could use. Oh, there we go. I see a ledge. Ooh, I like that even more. All right, so we're gonna tuck that right here, and that gives the glasses a nice landing spot. All right, let's just add a little bit of collage medium. Stick that down, and then we can add those glasses. Perfect. All right, placing that there. Now let's take this one. We'll get off the double-sided adhesive first. Absolutely love doing double-sided adhesive. It makes assembling multiple piece die sets so, so much easier. Okay, just bring that down. Hmm, maybe if I slide that over a bit more like that. There, I don't know, there's just something about having that more anchored that's working out slightly better. Okay, good. And then we'll put the other one right behind here. Yep, that'll work. Okay, so I just need to take the adhesive off the back. We'll tuck this kind of just a little bit behind the rose, but not too, too much. There we go. Mm, I don't know, I'm still not ha quite happy with that. Maybe if I go up, or what if we switch places? Now, the only thing about creating a card is like sometimes you have an idea and then you have to change the idea part way through just because of a logistics thing. And right now, this is definitely all about logistics. All right, move that place this one over here so it's higher up. That makes more sense. There we go. Okay. Push that one higher up, then place this one right here. 
There we go. Now I am much, much happier with that. Very cool. All right, and let's see, we've still got these elements to add. The question is, how are we going to add them? Hmm. I think I might just do four dots around the corners. That's going to be the easiest thing to do. And let's go with silver for these. So let's see. I'm going to use kind of the medium silver. Two. Nope, not two. That's the fun part of this. You have to kind of dig in order to find the size that you need. There are our four droplets. Good. So let's go ahead and stick them down in the corners. That'll work. One here that covers up the staple. And then one over here. Now, the last thing that we need to complete this card, of course, is a sentiment. Now, another wild card. We have the Tim Holtz Ideology sticker book, Small Talk. And this is the snarky edition. Why am I not surprised? So let's quickly open this up and let's see if we can't find something to match this card. Okay, this is too perfect. Why limit happy hour, happy to just an hour? That is the perfect sentiment to go along with these tropical drinks at midnight. So we're just gonna take that and I'm going to put that along the bottom. Perfect. I'm definitely happy with the way that card is finished off. Now, we just need to bring back... Perfect. Now we just need to bring back my husband and get his reaction to this card using the random craft supplies that he picked for me. Okay, and here are the finished results of our card. That was quite the jumble of craft supplies that I had to create with this. So let's get a reaction from the guy who put that madness together. Hey, Ben. Hello. So this is what I created with that basket of art supplies you pulled. That looks like drinks that could be on the beach in Hawaii. That is just what I was going for. I was going for the vibe of cocktails at midnight, and I was absolutely thinking of that fantastic trip that we took to Hawaii. Thank you for helping me put together the collection that created this super fun card. Well, I can put together collections of things. That you do. So, until next time, happy, happy crafting! crafting.